This is a World War II Canadian Army emergency ration. It weighs 9.9 .9 ounces, or 280 grams. Now these were issued one per soldier and stowed in their packs in case of the event of there being no other food available. It says right on the front, Purpose of contents, to be consumed only when no other rations of any kind are procurable, not to be opened except by order of an officer. This thing was likely made in 1944-45. I have a second one here, and this one's marked 1944 on the top of the can. Both cans are printed in English on one side and French on the other. We're going to save this one for display. It's um, a little bit swelled. The other one that we're going to open, MRE Mountain sent that in. And this is pretty much like the Canadian Field Ration D or British Emergency Ration of the era. It's, it's an iron ration. Now these are the Army Issued Emergency Rations used by the Canadian, British, and U.S. during World War II. The U.S. Army Field Ration D, the British Emergency Ration, and then of course the Canadian Army Emergency Ration. This one, Canadian Broad Arrow Mark and PRT, which is a manufacturer's lock code. Let's pull off that key. With that tab. No his. Some crackers wrapped in cellophane. Everything smells okay. That can is immaculate. It just smells light of chocolate, and that's about it. To obtain maximum nutritional benefit, this ration should be eaten slowly. If this chocolate has a white surface, it will be the result of excessive heat. However, this whitened surface does not affect the eating quality of the chocolate, and it will retain its full food value. Product of Fry Cadbury, Montreal. Yeah, Emery Mountain sent this in, and you gotta check out Emery Mountain's shop. So here's the chocolate. Canadian Army Emergency Ration. To obtain maximum nutritional benefit, this ration should be eaten slowly. If this chocolate bar has a white surface, it will be the result of excessive heat. However, this whitened surface does not affect the eating quality of the chocolate and will still retain its full food value. Product of the Fry Cadbury LTD, Montreal. By looking at this thing, my guess is it can't possibly have any more than between six and 800 calories, and that's like the max. These probably have about two to 300 calories each, and then the biscuits or crackers. Look at that, I mean, the cellophane is like perfect. It hasn't even discolored. This thing was well stored. That's looking pretty good. All right, so let's get this out onto a tray. Nice, in case. Let's first start off by checking out a pack of these biscuits. Look at that, that cellophane. It's not brittly or anything. Wow, they smell just a little bit stale, but. I mean, the shortening hasn't even gone rancid. It just smells a little bit stale. That's it. Let's check out the chocolate.
Whoa, look at that bloom. That's awesome. Fat separation. That's like, yeah, I mean, this chocolate easily 73, 74 years old. I mean, look at the little stains. Definitely has an off putting visual appearance. That's not too bad. That's really not bad at all. I mean, it's really bloomed chocolate. It seems like it's about at least 30 years old, but not 73, 74. It's in pretty good shape for that age. As for the flavor, it's pretty sweet and seems like a tropical chocolate, you know, built to withstand tropical temperatures. And it really, really reminds me the flavor of the British emergency ration from the same era. It's just a chocolate bar. This, a little bit more variation. Half your portion is chocolate, half is, you know, some biscuit, actually. Yeah, it's a little bit stale, but I mean, the appearance and smell, still, this definitely passes the smell test for trying out a World War II ration. This is great. I mean, that's really dry, like no moisture really at all. Very light shortening. There's no real salt or anything. Unbelievable. I mean, when you get biscuits this old, so much of the time, I mean, they're at least stale. You know, um, these are barely stale and they're in fantastic shape. Low moisture content, very little flavor, it's just like wheat. Yeah, they're pretty thirst provoking. But not rancid oils. This is actually fairly decent chocolate. It seems like there's oak flour added. And it's not overly sweet, but it's definitely well suited for a survival ration. And they eat these things slow. The biscuit, it's so dry you'd have to chase it down with water. I mean, there's nothing special about it other than the fact that it's over 70 years old. And, and then this, I mean, the flavor, it's really not that bad. Seems like it could turn into a halfway decent cocoa. You know, if you broke it up and added the hot water. I think that's what I'm gonna do with this other half. This is definitely a way to utilize bloom chocolate. Check out how that chocolate's looking after you kind of wash the bloom off it. Looks like fudge. Get a load of that. It really doesn't look bad at all. I would take the biscuits even. I'm going to soak one in there. Let's see what happens with that. If you were extremely hungry, imagine how nice this would be. That, that hardly does anything for the biscuit. It's still super dry, kind of miserable.
but okay, let's get it. a little bite with chocolate. Okay, that was actually awesome. I'm gonna do more of that. I think I just thought of something. Oh, now this is like gourmet World War II decadence right here. Check that out. You'd really have to, you know, switch things up with something like this. I mean, you can only eat chocolate bars and biscuits for so long before you got to think outside the box. It tastes like slightly watered down hot chocolate. I mean, the amount that was in there probably would have been better to add one or two ounces less, but it's actually somewhat creamy and sweet. I mean, it's not gourmet by any means, but this is. I mean, look at that. That was pure genius. It tastes like the closest thing you get to an EL fudge, but for World War II. Now that was actually fantastic right there. Wow, it's like, you know, chocolate paste over a really bland biscuit, which that's about as gourmet as it gets with this thing. Drop those in there. Let that soak for a second. Hmm, wow, the center was still dry. So I can imagine soldiers were just having variations of you know, hot cocoa or just a chocolate bar on its own or chocolate paste on the biscuits. Whatever way to prevent some menu fatigue. The hardtack, I mean, that's essentially what this is. Not super impressive for, you know, flavor, but definitely built to last. I mean, they take forever to soak. They're exceptionally dry, and I think that's why they lasted so long. Very low shortening content, and the little bit that's in there is not rancid. I mean, almost guaranteed in its lifespan, it was in utmost storage conditions for food. So if this was a World War II Canadian Army emergency ration, this thing was amazing. It was a true time capsule in the sense of changing very little over its 73 or 74 year lifespan. It seems like it was actually a fairly efficient ration with war tough components. Chocolate and biscuits, you can't go wrong. Well anyway, this is Steve1989, I hope you liked the video. I'll be coming back at you with something new. Or old. Alright, cool. See ya.